I'm sure we all know what, what occurred this morning. Uh, my personal opinion is that you all know where I stand on this. Um, do I think justice will serve? No. Where do I think justice is? I think this city is still owed an apology. On financial costs, this $10,000 doesn't even come close to what the city spent in resources to actually look over the camera, gather all the data, gather all the information that actually brought the indictment by the grand jury. To then use those very laws and the principles and values behind the Matthew Shepard hate crimes legislation to self-promote your career. Now this cast a shadow of whether they're telling the truth and he did this all in the name of self-promotion. Welcome back to Andrew Says. Thanks for joining me. By now you've heard of Jesse Smollett. Fake hate crime, no hate crime. Now he's getting off of all the charges for what seems to be a curious case of knowing the Obamas will get you off from a fake hate crime. Because now there's text messages that have been dropped, leaked, whatever you want to call it, between the state attorney and Michelle Obama's former chief of staff. So there's text messages there. You can find the link to that in the description. There's not much to the text messages themselves. It's more the story and the impending investigation around that. Another thing I want to touch before we get into this is people are saying I'm saying a boot or about. I don't even know. People have been saying this for a couple of years. Not many people, but some people. About, about, a boot? I don't get it. So the charges were supposed to be for aggravated assault and possibly, possibly a hate crime. But now since the hate crime was seen to be a hoax, the charges against Smollett are um, breach of the peace. Okay? So they released the the police reports, and they're hilarious. They're wild. They reveal some of the best evidence I've ever heard of. So the first piece of evidence I want to talk to you about is the check that he gave them. He paid them in a check for this <laughs> for this ordeal, $3,500. But Smollett says, no, I paid him $3,500 because he's my personal trainer. So these two guys, they're both personal trainers. The one says he's only got two clients. One of them is Smollett. And the other one says he's got 11 clients, but they... None of them pay him. They're all on a free trial basis. So the first guy who says Smollett's his client says he's got uh, the two clients and he charges clients anywhere between $20 to $50. So let's assume he charges Smollett $50 an hour. That's 70 hours of workout sessions that he's just now paying for conveniently around the same time this <laughs> fake crime started to happen. So he's getting trained for 70 hours without paying him. The next piece of evidence is a $100 bill Jesse Smollett gave them. He gave them a $100 bill to buy all the things related to this fake hate crime. So he gives them the bill. These two guys are on camera going into the store. They're buying masks. They're buying uh, wool caps. They're buying gloves. They're buying sunglasses. And they're buying red hats, which are supposed to double as the MAGA hats, obviously. So they buy all this on the camera with the $100 bill that Smollett gave them. And then this is where it starts to get funny. Okay, so I'm going to read this directly for you. Right off the police report again, okay? Both subjects walk to a silver Mercedes. A few minutes later, the vehicle attempts to back out of the parking space it was parked in while they were inside the store. It appears to become stuck. Subject e exits the passenger side of the vehicle and begins to push. An unknown citizen parked next to them assists them in backing out. So this is the worst crime I've ever heard of, okay? So not only do they take the money he gave them directly and go buy all this stuff, as if none of that's suspicious already. We're buying, <laughs> we're buying masks and gloves and hats and, and sunglasses. This isn't a crime. And then they go into their fancy car and they immediately get stuck and somebody has to help them. Uh, push their car out of the parking spot. So this is already the worst execution of any fake crime that's ever happened. The next, <laughs> the next piece of evidence is a El Yucateco bottle of hot sauce. I've never heard of this. I haven't seen this on any ha episodes of Hot Ones. Maybe some hot sauce fans can help me out. So they emptied out this bottle of hot sauce and filled it with bleach. Why a hot sauce bottle? I'm not sure. They filled it with bleach to pour on Smollett. The next piece of evidence is the video and still images of Je Jesse Smollett's car that they showed the witnesses, in this case the two guys that helped him, in order to identify if it was his car. And of course, 
all they had to do was they went around to the surrounding areas, got the footage, and found that it was his car, found the car that was on tape, dropping these guys off, <laughs> and then just found out that it was his car. Like, <laughs> So here's the story of what actually happened. Josie Smollett, before pick, before doing this fake hate crime, he goes to their house, picks them up directly from in front of their house, goes to where they do the hate crime, or where they fake it, drops them off, and then right after, goes around the back. I'm not familiar with the streets of Chicago. You can read this in the police report if you want. But he goes around and picks them up in an alleyway and takes them back home. Dude, did he, did he want to get caught? This is what I'm starting to think now, is that maybe he wanted to get caught, and he was thinking the fame that he would get from this is still worse, this backlash. Maybe they told him he would get off of it, get off from the charges anyways. So maybe he just thought the, the fame from all this would get people to watch Empire and keep him on the show. I don't know. It's starting to be suspiciously stupid, okay? You're giving people a check. You're giving them a crisp $100 bill. They're going out and buying all these supplies getting stuck there by the way austin powersing their way trying to back out and apparently you thought this was going to work you go and pick them up and drop them off like they're coming to and from school so throughout all this they had a they had a search warrant as well which they found 20 dollars in a safe they confiscated that very good and a lot of this police report talked about how they how they have to avoid the media uh, they try going into the hotels they try going into the bank they have to go through all these different places to try to gather video evidence and a copy of the check, but they're doing this all by avoiding media. Jesse Smollett turned himself in at 5 a.m. to avoid the media, so I don't know what's going on. But what happens next? It looks like it, it, the mayor's obviously not happy, the chief of police. It looks like that somebody got this guy off, because with no charges, now they're saying what he did is he did, I think, 30-something hours of community service with Jesse Jackson's organization where he went to some center and he passed out some pamphlets and he talked about things. And, you know, 30 hours of community service, that, that's cool. He committed a federal crime by failing of mailing a fake hate letter to himself, tried to pretty much ruin the country. These things piling on top of each other are ruining how people get along in the United States of America. So I don't know what's going to happen next. Let me know in the comments what you think should happen, and then I'll read them and I'll try not to say the word about ever again.